Hi, this is Ed from Wright. Today we're talking about the Standard B. We've got the large frame Standard B and the small frame Standard B. We're going to talk about where this product line fits within the rest of our products, and then we're going to go through each of these, mach these machines individually and go through all the features. All right, first let's talk about where the Standard B lineup fits relative to our other mowers. The Standard B is a commercial mower. It's not a, a prosumer mower, but it is at a cheaper price. And we do that because for many folks, they have a machine that they're going to use low utilization, I call it. So for example, the smaller machine here, uh, if you've got just a couple backyards that you're doing on your route every week, this is a great machine to put in the mix. You're not going to put a ton of hours on it, but with flat free tires, it, it's going to be there for you every time you need it. So it's got some of these commercial features which give you the reliability, but it's not necessarily as heavy duty or with the higher price of something like the standard intensity. Same thing for the large B. Large B 48 or 52 inch deck, it will give you a lot of production, but it's not the type of machine that you would continue to put, you know, two, three engines on it for thousands and thousands of hours. Um, so what it does is at a lower price point, you can use this machine to get that productivity and build cash flow as you're building your business. Um, so what, what makes these mowers a lower cost than some of our other machines? These machines have uh, a, a couple things that stand out uh, different than Intensity or Standard X, starting with the small machine. Um, what we have here is we have an integrated transmission. So there's a transaxle, a left transaxle, and a right transaxle underneath there. And uh, those just allow us to reduce the amount of parts we use to build the mower pretty significantly. And the, the trade-off to that is that we have to move where you stand back about maybe two or three inches uh, because of where those transmissions sit. And then also, because the engine's connected to those transmissions at a fixed height, the engine's mounted to the frame, the deck is real close to the engine, so when, when the deck goes up and down, the belt has to take a taper angle when you're at the limits of the cut, which will result in fatigue on the belt eventually, um, but it also lets us significantly simplify the machine. The Big B, it's very similar uh, setup. Another thing that we have is we have the low profile air cleaners. These work just fine. You just have to maintain, uh, maintain it more frequently than one of the larger canister cent uh, centrifuge type uh, air cleaners. Um, the, the guts of the engine itself is actually fairly similar to what you'd see in an intensity or a standard X. So that's a, that's a little bit of, of what these machines are. Um, I, I guess another thing also is that usually on our real heavy duty machines, we avoid as much as possible ever any metal part uh, contacting another part that moves. Uh, we're typically always going to put a bushing or a bearing or something like that in that place, whereas this machine, in some cases, we do that. So for example, the deck lift lever, when it comes up here, there's a notch in the steel that the lever goes into. Um, that the paint can chip off there and it could cause a little bit of rust to happen right there. And on some of our bigger commercial machines, uh, we're typically going to use uh, zinc plating or we're going to use some other methods and things like that. Um, or for example, the, these control handles, these are mounted on bushings rather than a ball bearing. So there's a number of things which help us get to this lower entry price. Uh, but if you're going to put hundreds and hundreds of hours on a machine a year, it's probably going to end up being more economical to move up to the heavy duty machine. Now, um, I, I'm not going to directly compare ourselves to uh, other companies that are in the business. Um, this machine also puts us in a category where you see stand on mowers that have um, integrated transmissions or they have um, pneumatic air, air tires or something like that. This puts us right in that range, but you still get some pretty nice features. You get the, the heavy duty Kawasaki uh, engine, you get heavy duty shift starters. Our electrical system is the same heavy duty design that we have in our bigger machines. So there's a number of things that um, you get in these, these uh, mowers at a, a comparable or in some cases a better price. Uh, than what you might see out there. Great machine. Um, again, if you've got a couple properties you're doing the backyards on, or if you're building a business and you want to get that cash flow going, this gives you that productivity and reliability that you're looking for. All right, starting off with the operating position. Here you can see the view around the machine. So uh, one thing that's important with any narrow machine for, for getting in gates or whatever is that there's a taper angle here. You don't want to be up against a fence. Um, Pardon the, the battery covers leaning out so I can show you that. But um, 
you want an angle like this so when you go through a gate, nothing's hitting the gate opening, or if you're up against a hill and a fence, that you have a nice wedge shape to it. Similar thing on this side. So here we have a great view, the corner of our deck. Through the heat shield, you can see uh, what you're right up against there. Around this side, again, great visibility all around. For the control area, again, very similar to many of our machines. We got the parking brake here, which goes into the transmission. So this is a, a Paul type parking brake. It doesn't go against the tire. Uh, it's not a, a wet disc brake or anything like that. It's, um, it's like a true parking brake, like you'd have in an automatic transmission in a car. Um, our controls do lock out. You can see a little tab that drops in there. Our throttle is near the middle, blade switch, key switch, and then this is our deck height adjust. So you can see the height select pin from five down to two inches. Drop that down um, and we've got our deck level. Coming around the back, we can open up the pad. Here is the fuse box. This is our heavy duty sealed setup. So you can see the relay. We have a diode, helps some of the switches last longer um, in there, because when you actually turn off the clutch, it sends like an arc back through the system. So there's a diode in there for that. Here you can see conveniently all your key service parts and also uh, the, how the belts go in to the machine. Here are your oil levels. So there's a cold line. You want this to be kind of near the bottom uh, of that. Up under the instrument panel, we have this is the start switch, so you have to have the brake on to start the engine choke throttle. We have the sealed type PTO switch. We actually run some of our circuits double in there, just for good measure. And then back up behind there, we have the key switch. Fuel tank, essentially located, five gallons, very simple fuel system. Here's, you can see your fuel level through these pockets. Opening up the back here, you can see a little bit of what's going on, you can see the pulleys going into the pumps. You can see the two integrated transmissions. And then uh, our platform, it's a suspension platform, pretty good amount of movement. And uh, there's holes here, so leaves and stuff don't collect and they fall through. And up behind here, there's a switch. Um, so you have to be on the platform uh, in order to turn the blades on, like many of our machines. There's really two methods in our industry to do that. One is to have um, a safety on the hand where you, your hand has to be there. Um, those tend to be sort of problematic. They sputter on and off. This one's in the platform. Now, right in front here, there's three uh, elastomer springs. Uh, you can certainly run with all three, but there's also some options here. So you can see these other holes here. You can move the spring up closer to the axis to soften it a little bit. You can also remove uh, for example, you can remove the middle one if you want a softer ride. Um, so there, there's some couple things you can do there. Uh, we have the tie-down hooks, the wheelie wheels. Right underneath there, there's a heavy-duty bar that reinforces the tractor frame. And then if you do ever need to move these around in the garage or something like that, you can uh, pull these back into one of these notches. And that's the hydro relief. So when you pull these off out, uh, you can push the mower uh, across the floor. All right, coming around clockwise, we have the battery box here. Um, there's a strap that goes over it, so you don't need any tools or anything like that to get in there if you have to jump start it. We have the parking brake here. Oil fill. The parking brake, this type of parking brake doesn't require adjustment. We're actually pulling on this spring that engages the cog, um, so there's, there's no adjustment there. Uh, the deck is a 7-gauge deck on the 32 and on the 36. Um, oh, and, and by the way, the tires here, with the uh, 36, you get, uh, I believe it's an 8-inch wide tire. And on the 32, you get a, uh, there's 8 inches, uh, you get a 650 wide tire. So this tire um, is about one tread narrower on the 36. Than on on the sorry on the 32 than it is on the 36. All right, so the deck um, you have your rear deck lift shaft, your front deck lift shaft, your adjusters. So you always want your deck to have if you point the blade front to back, you want the front of the blade to be about a quarter inch lower than the back of the blade um, to get the best cut from it. 
the deck has heavy duty reinforcement bar on it. And let's get uh, the camera down inside here. You can see the clutch, the idler, the main belt first goes to the discharge side pulley, comes around here. There's the idler in the front, goes to the trim side pulley. Then we have the um, tensioning idler. And a lot of our tension idlers have, have this die spring set up here um, and the arms on ball bearings. These just uh, almost last forever and um, they keep a nice steady tension on the deck. Um, we, we try to avoid making our belts too tight. So you can see this is nice soft. That's how it should be. Um, and then the spindles uh, on the B series are an aluminum housing uh, on our other machines there, uh, cast iron. Uh, the small B has a, a bushing set up in here. It's real long, so there isn't too much force on them. Um, actually, a little trick is see this little notch in the bottom of the arm. If you flip the arm over, you can lower the front end of the machine about a quarter inch. So although the height selector says two inches, uh, you can configure the machine to go uh, just a, bit, a little bit lower. Um, the tires on this machine are flat free. The guard helps uh, protect anything from hitting the muffler. Our standard flute chute deflector um, is a little bit different on this machine. We have the pivot further back and what that does, and this is actually something to keep an eye on. Most machines that are 36 are advertised as for going through a gate, but a lot of them when you fold the chute up, the chute's actually in the way and you can't get through the gate without removing the chute. But by moving this pivot back a little bit, our chute uh, will fold all the way up in so you can get uh, through an opening and it's also a lot easier to put a catcher on there inside the deck. Uh, it's very similar airflow to what we have in an aero core. The biggest difference is that these baffles are, uh, this is a bent lip on the top instead of a welded lip. Uh, so it's a little slightly different, same blades. Uh, we love to mount everything with these round head bolts so that it's easy to clean off under here and there's not much to snag onto. The back of our discharge opening, we've got this here, which controls how much grass recirculates. If you watch a mower out cutting, the grass right here gets kind of confused, and this helps reduce the confusion of that airflow. It splits the airflow. So we get nice flow out this way, and then we're tapered back here. And what that does is if there's nowhere for a little clump to build up, we get the grass steadily flows out of here without um, snagging up. So it's a little bit of what's going on in the deck. The engine is the Kawasaki FX600, 18 and a half horsepower. We spec those out with the uh, heavy duty shift starter. That's a starter like what you'd have in a truck or a tractor or something like that. Um, and then on this side, again, we pointed out the selector before. We like to try to keep moving parts to a minimum. So like for our example, our selector, we don't use a ball detent on there because the ball is something to get jammed up. We have this little pin and once it's in that way, it's locked in. So we, we try to avoid moving parts. And then this is just a little storage place for convenience. Keep a water bottle here or um, small items can, can be stored there. So overall, that's the uh, small standard B. Uh, it's, it's lightweight, so it's really nimble. It's one thing I love about these machines. Um, the control forces are low, the traction is good, and uh, you can really whip around with them super conveniently. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the large frame B. First off, we have the operator area, very similar to the small frame B. Great visibility to where the deck is. This is the 48. 48 and 52 have the same tire, so the 52 inch deck would be about right there. Here we have the parking brake. Parking brake has to be on to start the engine. We lock in the controls, key, choke, throttle, blade switch, and over here we have the deck lift selector. So it tabs in there, and you can see we cut from two to five inches. So overall, pretty straightforward uh, operating area. One great thing about the bees also is that um, once you are used to driving this machine and you want to move into something like a ZK, um, the, the, immediately you're comfortable with it because the proportion, the controls are all pretty much identical. The biggest thing about the, the big B is that the frame tubes go straight, whereas 
the small frame B, you can see there's a dog leg in the tube in order to fit the engine um, into that smaller uh, uh, wheel track in the back. So we've got the five gallon tank. You can eye the level through there. We've got the service parts, the oil fill, pretty much the same electrical layout, the same uh, fuse box on the Big B. The platform arrangement is slightly similar, or, or sorry, slightly different. The uh, difference here is that our bumpers are underneath the platform. Instead of in front of the platform, there's more space to put them there. And again, we ship with four, which is a little on the stiff side. You can easily take out one or two if you want to soften up the ride. Here we have the uh, operator presence switch. We've got the return springs. You can see the transmissions here. Try to get a good view on that. Coming around the left, you can see the wheelie wheel. The battery box here uh, is a plastic box, more like a boat battery case type system. Um, again, it's very easy to remove this strap if you want to jump start without any tools. Parking brake, very similar layout here. Here we'll take the deck cover off, give you a little bit of a view of the deck drive. On this machine, you can see the clutch. It's a pretty heavy duty clutch setup. You can see the return idler there. In this case, that idler arm is mounted to the frame side, giving us the longest span right here for the deck to, when it goes up and down. This is the section that uh, has an angle to it. Um, our early, when we first came out with the B, we actually had a different pulley on here that didn't have this lip here. And if you had a lot of vibration in your deck um, and your pulley drive and you're at always uh, either at the top or bottom of the range the jump belt could jump out and so we made these uh, pulley flanges wider these pulleys can be fit up on the on the original version too um, coming through here we've got a stationary stationary idler it's going to wrap around the main pulley even though this is a more affordable mower we use the same uh, heavy duty type idler idlers as we do on our other machines here you can see the, the push arms or pull arms in this case that fasten the deck to the frame. The deck, this deck is 11 gauge, but we reinforce it everywhere that's critical. So the baffles that are in there are re reinforced in the deck. Like most of our decks, we put this rib all the way across the top. It gives the deck a ton of rigidity. We have a 11 gauge laminate that's on top of the 11 gauge base. We've got this really thick bar around the nose of the deck. The Big B has pneumatic tires. Comes in a 48 and 52 inch deck, which look very similar. Just the width would be a little bit wider, symmetrical on both sides. Coming around here, you can see that the Big B has a little bit heavier deck, and so we have an assist spring inside the deck. We have a, a setup that's very, very similar to the AeroCore deck. The differences here are that the, um, obviously the nose is different. Um, it's perpendicular instead of angled out. And we have welded this piece on there to give us the reinforcement. The baffles have almost the same locations, but they're actually made up differently. Like this edge here, it's a bent piece of metal instead of perpendicular welded. And, um, AeroCore has uh, the back of the deck here tapers down a little bit and the B deck uh, doesn't have that. It has a standard back on it, which in some cases it's better for thicker, heavier grass um, and lighter grass. That uh, chamfer that we put on there helps create more vacuum as the air spins. The Big B has the hydro relief right here. So you pull these out, tab them in. You can see the rear deck roller. Uh, this, this bolt right here actually is connected to the cam on this spring. So if you put a wrench on here and turn it, you can release the spring tension on the idler. makes it easier to replace the deck, and then you turn this back to, to tab it in. The tires here are 20 by 10 dash 8. So this rim here is 10 inches. Gives us a little more room to push it in near the frame. This rim is 8 inches. So we get a lot of squish here. We get a lot of traction for the wheel diameter. 
Now, some machines have 20 inch tires, some have 24 inch tires. And um, what we found is that when you have the smaller rim, you actually get pretty similar ground contact as you do with a 24, but you reduce a ton of torque on the transmission. So we like the 20s because the machine's shorter, which helps it be more nimble. We still get good traction and the transmissions will last a lot longer uh, with the uh, 20 inch tire. 20 inch tires are also uh, very much readily available. This is sort of a traditional golf cart dimension tire, even though it's got a different tread on it. But um, these, these parts are very available uh, and easy to look after. The Big B has a plastic ammo box on it uh, to store things, gloves, something like that. And uh, the engine is the FS651 engine. Um, pretty heavy duty engine. Again, very similar engine block to the engine that's on our Big Bs. You can see here the displacement says 726 cc. That's the same displacement as the FX 730 we have on a standard X. Uh, it's just a, a different setup here with the air filter uh, and, and whatnot. So that's the, the large frame B. Again, the productivity is good. The balance is good. It's very agile because the weight's centralized. You get that classic standard feel, uh, real stable on the hills uh, and, and those types of things. Uh, the entry price is lower, so you can generate uh, good cash flow with it. Um, but this is not necessarily the type of machine that you're going to run for four or 6,000 hours through two or three engines. Um, so if you got any questions, let us know. Put them in the uh, comments, and we'll be glad to stay in touch and uh, answer any questions you might have about the standard B lineup. Hopefully, hopefully you have a good rest of the season.